The Courtship of Harry Potter by Diana Williams. Chapter 7 Adjustments. Harry, are you alright? Ron whispered to him as they slid into their seats in the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. You look bloody awful. Harry felt awful. He'd stayed up way too late reading the night before and then had overslept and missed breakfast. His stomach growled to remind him of that oversight. I'm fine. Someone forgot to wake me for breakfast, though. Ron flushed and suddenly seemed to have trouble meeting Harry's eyes. Ah, uh, Wait. That is, I didn't get back to the room last night. Harry gave him a surprised look. He'd been so absorbed in his reading that he'd missed the other boys coming to bed and he'd just assumed Ron had been with them. Then where did you... He broke off as he saw Ron's blush deepen. Oh, right. Hermione, as head girl, had her own room, although it appeared she'd had a roommate the previous night. They were silent for a minute, and then, curious, he asked softly, How was it? Ron's face lit up with a look that made Harry feel peculiar. It was brilliant! He replied, dropping his voice so that only Harry could hear him. Not that we got everything right, you know, being a first time, but it didn't seem to matter because it was... Oh, probably doesn't make any sense, that, he added sheepishly. Actually, it does, Harry said and sighed. He wondered if he'd ever find something like that in his life, especially considering the new twist it had taken. It would have been nice to think that his eventual partner in these rites would be interested in his pleasure as well. However, while last night's perusal of the book had certainly opened his eyes in regards to what wizards did together, the description of the Eromenus' role as a passive vessel had been discouraging, to say the least. His brief fantasies about an older and more experienced lover taking him in hand and teaching him about the pleasures of the flesh had dissolved in the light of reality and he felt increasingly discouraged about his prospects afterwards, since the other thing last night's reading had confirmed was that he was more attracted to men than women. Not only was he a freak as far as the Dursleys were concerned, he was apparently one in the wizarding world as well. He realized that Ron was looking at him quizzically and managed to smile. I'm happy for both of you, Harry said sincerely. Ron grinned back at him, and then Professor Spindly Worm entered the room, so they turned the attention to the lesson. During the next six months, we will be reviewing everything you've learned over the last six and a half years in preparation for your notes, the DADA professor announced. I would recommend that you pull out all your previous notes and spend at least an hour every night revising. I know, he said as the students groaned, that it isn't fun, but neither would failing and repeating this year. Harry kept his eyes on his paper as he jotted down Professor Max's instructions, reluctant to let his eyes meet the other man's. Given the circumstances, it felt peculiar to be just going about his glasses as if everything was the same. So, who can tell me about red caps? Several hands shot into the air. Mr. Longbottom? Neville paled a little, but he stammered. They're small, goblin-like creatures who... who bludgeon their victims and... And used their blood to dye their caps. Good, Mr. Lopbottom. Five points. Now, who can tell me two things that discourage them? Mr. Potter. Harry looked up, startled at hearing his name called out since he hadn't been paying attention. He surreptitiously placed his hand over the picture he'd been doodling on the edge of his parchment and tried to recall the current lesson. Um. Miss Granger. Crosses and cross-handled swords, she answered promptly. Very good, Miss Granger. Mr. Potter. Five points each. Harry blinked, and his mouth nearly fell open. He hadn't even answered, just stammered stupidly, and the professor had given him points. That didn't seem right, but he couldn't exactly accuse the man of blatant favoritism, could he? After all, it wasn't as if certain other teachers didn't play favorites, too. But this felt different. It wasn't about Gryffindor, it was about Harry. Feeling more than a little uneasy, Harry kept his eyes down and his mouth shut during the rest of class. As they headed off to their next class, Harry regretted that he'd dropped divination the previous year. Exhausted as he felt, he could have used a good nap. He managed to remain awake somehow during arithmancy, and was relieved to finally head to the hall for lunch. The only thing that reduced his appetite was the knowledge that his next class was double potions.
He made sure he arrived in plenty of time for class, taking a seat next to Neville as Ron slid in beside Hermione. The Slytherin contingent arrived a few minutes later, but Harry ignored them, keeping his eyes fixed on his parchment again as he copied down the instructions from the board. Well, well, if it isn't Hogwarts' favorite little catamite, said a familiar drawling voice, and Harry could feel the presence of someone at his elbow. He drew in a deep breath and continued doggedly, ignoring Draco. However, he could see Ron stiffen on the bench in front of him. You should talk, Ralphoy, Ron snapped. How many cards did you have? Seven? Ten? Pouring yourself to the entire ministry, are you? No, I leave that to the Weasleys, Draco said sweetly. Ron stood up, his fists clenched. Why you? Harry said and stood up as well, holding out his arm to keep Ron from launching himself at Draco. Thanks, Ron, but I can handle myself. Oh, yes, I imagine you're very good at handling yourself, Draco said, smirking. Harry glared at him, but before he could say anything, the door slammed open and the potions master made his usual brisk entrance into the room. There will be no brawling in my classroom, Mr. Potter, Mr. Weasley, Snape said, swiftly making his way to the front of the room. Ten points from Gryffindor, each. Ron glared at Snape, but dropped back into his seat without a word, having learned the futility of protesting over the past seven years. Harry sat down as well and resumed his copying, oddly relieved that Snape was no different. He was still as blatantly unfair as ever. Snape reached the front of the classroom and turned around, glaring at the room in general. Mr. Malfoy, do you require assistance in locating your seat? Draco, who was still smirking down at Harry, looked up in surprise. No, Professor. Then I advise you to take your place now, or I will require you to remain after class to reacquaint yourself with it. And then again, Harry thought, maybe not. He felt Draco move away and dared to look up at Snape for a brief moment before looking back down. Snape was glaring at the entire class. Today we will work on one of the potions required for you to pass your newts at the end of the year. Since I doubt that any of you will actually succeed in making the potion correctly, we will be repeating this lesson several times over the next six months. I suggest that you strive to absorb something, as I have no desire to teach any of you imbeciles again next year. Harry could feel Snape's eyes on his face briefly before they moved away. Miss Granger switched places with Mr. Longbottom and endeavored to keep Mr. Potter awake. I would hate to have this class's pitiful attempts ruined by Mr. Potter landing face first in a cauldron. One expulsion per class is my limit. I do trust that you won't disappoint me in that, Mr. Longbottom. Harry looked up briefly as Hermione and Neville changed places, and he caught Snape's eyes on him. For a brief instant, he thought he saw a hint of concern and sympathy in those dark eyes before the man turned away in a swirl of robes to begin lecturing them about the potion they were about to make. For some reason, that made Harry feel oddly warm inside.